This short video shows you how to set up your development environment and takes you through the steps to configure your EXE4 IDE and Macintosh so that you can run, deploy, and debug your apps using your Mac, iOS simulator, or iOS device. So let's get started by creating a FireMonkey mobile application for Delphi. Say File, New, FireMonkey mobile application. Next, you'll see a set of application templates that you can choose. Uh, there are eight different templates. We'll just do something simple and start with the header footer mobile application. It asks for a directory to place your project in. I've got one called test one here. And an iOS mobile help wizard comes up, which will take you through the steps required to configure your development environment, including installing Xcode. We need Xcode to be able to package up your iOS applications. So I already have Xcode installed on my computer. Let's go take a look. I'm using Xcode 4.6.1, which is compatible with iOS 6.1. After you've installed Xcode on a Macintosh, the next step that the iOS help wizard guides you to is to make sure that you have the command line tools installed. So let's go back to Xcode, and we can find out what's installed by saying Xcode Preferences. Go to the Downloads page, and it'll show you here that I've already downloaded the command line tools and installed them, and I've installed several simulators for the iOS devices. Going back to the iOS help wizard, the next step for setting up our environment is to install the platform assistant on the Macintosh. And the platform assistant allows the Windows-based IDE to talk to the Macintosh and connect via the Macintosh to the devices and the simulators so that we can test and run our applications. This platform assistant for the Macintosh is available both in your install directory here under Rad Studio. You can also grab it from installers.codegear.com. I've already grabbed it. It's here on my desktop. It's called Rad PA Server XE4.pkg. I'll just double click and install the PA server. And it will install on the Macintosh hard drive. And it's over here on my hard drive under Applications, Rad PA Server. So I'll just execute it. And the first time you start it up after a reboot of the Macintosh, it'll ask you to log in and say it's okay for that tool to access. Uh, some of the lower level interfaces on the Macintosh. So now the Platform Assistant server is running on my Mac. So the next step is to run it, which I did. And now I need to create and test a connection profile on the development PC. So we can do that in a couple different ways. We can go into Environment Options by going Tools, Options, Connection Profile Manager. We don't have any profiles currently, so we can add one. A profile name, I'm going to call this My Mac. And the platform is OS X. You can also use the connection profile to set up remote connections to Windows desktops and Windows servers. And then I need to have the IP address or name of my Macintosh, which is called Samwise Gamgee. And if I put any password in when I started up the platform assistant, I would enter that as well. We can test the connection, make sure it's okay. It says it's fine. And now we have a connection profile that we can use. The next step is to configure which SDK that we want to connect in our project. We can do that by saying Tools Options, Environment Options, SDK Manager. And now we can add a new SDK for whatever platform, in my case, iOS device. It knows the connection profile for my Macintosh and what SDK that I want to develop for. It gets all that information through the Platform Assistant. It will now connect up and make sure I have all the information available for building my projects. The next step is to create a FireMonkey iOS app, which I've already done through the file new project and chose the template. Let's go and look at our project. So here now in the project window, my simulator has the MyMac profile and so does my device that I've connected. I can activate one of the target platforms and hit run and it will compile the iOS application in the Windows IDE and run the simulator with my application that just has the title, header, and footer. And when I'm done, let's quit the simulator and go back to the IDE. We can also make sure the device is connected by activating the device project. And let's hit the, the run button. It'll again build the iOS application and send it through my Macintosh to my device. Because it's going to run on the device, it will need to code sign and sandbox the application. That's why we needed those command line tools. And it's asking me if those tools can access my developer key from my keychain, and I'll allow it. And here now is my application running on my iPad 4. So that's how easy it was to get my application running on the simulator. In order to create an application for a device, I needed to join the iOS developer program, which I did. 
Once you've done that, you can acquire an iOS developer certificate, and all of that information is available in the doc wiki, as well as in this wizard help that pops up. It tells you how to provision the iOS application with a provisioning profile. I've created one already. Let me switch back to Xcode and bring up the window organizer and go to my devices. And you'll see that I've got, for my Macintosh, I've got my iPad 4, and it's got a provisioning profile, which is my provisioning profile with my key. I've configured my profile for Rad Studio, tools, options, environment options, provisioning. And then you saw the application running on the device, and that's the end of the multi-page iOS uh, application development help file. And that's how easy it is to configure, and that's how easy it is to configure your development environment that runs on Windows and the tools that you need on the Macintosh side to be able to test your application with the simulator or test your application with the device.